come to the trustee meeting September 26, 2022. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Kent. Mm -hmm. Here, Mr. Sanchez. Here. I'm going to do roll call. We our director, senior center, Jim Henshaw. Our park superintendent, Todd Schaefer, cannot be here tonight. Our fire chief, Chief Andy Frost, is on vacation. Our police chief, Chief Bob Gavalier, I think is going to be a few minutes late. We have our zoning inspector, Darren Cravelli. We have our township administrator and road supervisor, Mike Dockery. We have our fiscal officer, Lori Wolf. We have our Austin Town Township trustee, Steve Kent, which is absent today. We have our Austin Town Township trustee, Robert Santos. And I am Austin Town trustee, Monica Deepers. Motion to approve minutes of regular meeting of September 12, 2022. So moved. Second. Mrs. Devers? Yes. Mr. Santos? Yes. Administrator report. Uh, no thing I need to report as far as administrator and part of business is the latest update from uh, Verno, our resurfacing contractor, is that he believes they'll be starting the second week of October. Awesome. Okay. Second week of October. You all have like, you give you like an order which roads he's doing first, does he? Do we have any idea? Uh, we won't know that until he uh, meets with uh, Bill. Okay. It's their decision, but you know, Bill will sit with them and you know. Would they have any questions about what they, he thinks where they should go? All right. Okay. Well, since our police department's not here right now, and our fire department will go straight to zoning. I would ask the board to approve a nuisance resolution on High Rise Code 505.87 and declare the following properties a nuisance 2434 Amberley Street, High Grass uh, 2730 Cambridge, a zero turn that's been in the front yard for the last month. Uh, 5711 Baylor, high grass and dog waste in the rear yard, 110 North Beverly, uh, weeds along the north side of the driveway, 3491 Derbyshire, dead tree in the back, that house appears to be vacant, 3805 Frederick Street, a dead tree near the intersection of Frederick Street and 3rd Street, 1189 Idaho Road, uh, high grass and weeds, 39 South Main Street, high grass and weeds, 3690, one new road. This is a vacant home, high grass and weeds, jumping the and uh, fence falling down. Uh, 4547 Plumbrook, high grass and weeds and jumping the debris. 3921 uh, weeds, and then there's a oil can filled with oil at these side of well, the house appears to be vacant. 221 North Road, no high grass. Uh, 5360 West Rockwell, high grass, debris, and um, there was a tree that just fell, a large living tree just fell on the house. And normally I wouldn't jump to conclusions and bring that to the trustee, but trustees, but this house is such a mess. And the tree just fell like this weekend. Uh, it's, the house is a total, total disaster prior to the tree falling. So I might be jumping the gun on that, but regardless. And 4498 uh, Wycliffe, the uh, Warwick North. Uh, Offense that's our and yard waste in need of removal. Motion to determine that attached properties constitute a public nuisance pursuant to ORC 50587. So moved. Second. Mr. Santos? Yes. Mrs. Deaver? Yes. That's all I have unless the board has questions. You have no motor vehicle? Yeah.
Parkinson's or Park Department is in here. I have a motion to approve Wedgwood Park Pavilion roof replacement proposal from Votes and Sons for four thousand dollars. I, I, I can speak to both of those. Those are uh, we received uh, at least two, and I think maybe three on each of these. And, and the, this was the lowest. Each of these were the lowest bid on those proposals. And, and both of these were at Boken Sun. No, the second one is for Evergreen Lawns. Okay, I see it. Okay. Yeah. So moved. Second. Mrs. Deaver? Yes. Mr. Santos? Yes. Yes. Then the motion to approve Wedgwood Park Concrete Removal Proposal for Evergreen Lawn is $4,650. So moved. Second. Mr. Santos? Yes. Mrs. Deaver? Yes. Okay, Senior Center, how are you? <laughs> alone. <laughs> you can scoot over, over if you want. <laughs> uh, we got a couple things. Uh, we have a policy at the Senior Center that if any of the members uh, hear or see us something they would like to do, uh, we get a sign-up list there, and if we get <clears> enough people interested, then we'll investigate uh, doing that particular project. Well, right now, I have enough people signed up for, <laughs> you aren't going to believe this, craft classes, bocce, genealogy, card making, self-defense classes, square dancing, pinochle, and brandy making. So we'll be looking into finding instructors and setting up time to get some of that stuff going. The bocce class, uh, I was interested in it because I found out they actually have uh, an inflatable, portable, indoor bocce course. Okay. Oddly enough, so we're looking into that. But we had a, a lot of people signed up for that. It's a very popular sport now, I guess. So that's the exciting things that are going on at the senior center right now. I understand there was an issue with one of your uh, road trips. You, you mean our catalytic converter? Yeah. Yeah, they come periodically and pick them up from us. Uh -huh. <laughs> what was interesting is its park was parked right next to the bus. They didn't take the converter off the bus. It had two. They got the one last year, and, mm -hmm. but they, there was two of them on the bus. They didn't touch it. It was right next to the van. So if anything, they were probably grateful that they took that one. Probably cheaper to fix that one than that, that uh, bigger Falcon vehicle. And what they need to do is these things are they go for about five hundred bucks scrap value now on things. Is they need to put a GPS tracker in them and find out who's fencing Just all the Apple tags. Works. Yeah. <laughs> is that all you have for us? Hmm? Is that all you have for us? I guess for the time being, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, I have a question for you. Um, since voting is right around the corner here, I want to know if you can inform us on how the signs are allowed to be put. And since we're a month away before we start to have issues with this, um, where the signs are allowed and Political signs are permitted uh, on private property. There's no time frame to keep them up all year. Uh, on the roads, township, county, and state roads, we ask that they go back about 10 to 12 feet. On the main corridors, like on Mahoney Avenue, we really don't want them in the devil strip. Sometimes that's the only place they can put them. If they have the little yard signs, you know, bless it. But if they put anything like four by four in the devil strip, we're gonna pull it. We will pull any sign that is a site obstruction. Because they're political signs, if we pull them, we'll either put them outside the zoning office door or outside of our side door here. We will not throw them away. But it's just common sense, about 10 to 12 feet back from the curb in the neighborhoods, on the county roads, as far back as you can get it. Um, if you're in the Devil Strip, maybe put them parallel with the road, as back as far as you can. Uh, like I said, we will pull anything that creates a site obstruction. Matter of fact, I'm going to look at a sign on North 46 that somebody left me a voicemail today with. I didn't get down there today. If it's a site obstruction, we'll pull it. Uh, if not, then it won't. Lori, how are you tonight? I'm good. I, um, I have my reports tonight, but I also just wanted to say that the, the second half settlement came in. I have it all figured. It's not posted yet, so it's not going to show on this report. And then as soon as that came in, we got to roll back at Homestead. So as far as cash flow right now, we're doing well. I have to look at 
at the expenses we still have for the rest of the year to make sure we're going in the right direction. Awesome. Motion to approve August report submitted to the board at the September 12, 2022 meeting. Fund status, revenue status, appropriation status. So moved. Second. Mrs. Deaver? Yes. Mr. Santos? Yes. Under new business, we have motion to approve the usage of Wycliffe Circle Park by Wycliffe Circle Christmas Committee for the annual Christmas lighting ceremony Thursday, December 1st, 2022. So moved. And second. That's a good time. It's fun. Yes. Mr. Santos? Yes. Mrs. Deavers? Yes. Okay. The Ohio Division of Liquor Control. The weather to request a hearing on notice legislative authority to approve the new permit to, to Mark and Company doing business at Get Go Austin Town, 3132, 5163 Mahoning Avenue, Austin Township, Austin Town, Ohio, 44515. Permit number 879 Permanent class D1. And how do you feel about this? No objections. No objections. So moved. Second. Mr. Santos? Yes. Mrs. Deavers? Yes. Whether to request a hearing on notice to legislate authority to approve the new permit to Cedar Petroleum LLC doing business as Wedgwood Shell, 1704 South Raccoon Road, Austin Town Township, Austin Town, Ohio, 44515, permit number 1350413, permit classes D1 and D2. Mr. No objections. So moved. And second. Mrs. Deavers? Yes. Mr. Santos? Yes. Whether to request a hearing on a notice to legislate authority to approve the transfer from SSSAH123 Incorporated, doing business, Austown Beverage Center, first floor only, 4903 Mahoning Avenue, Austown Township, Austin Town, Ohio, 44515. Permit number 8429696. Permit classes D5 and D6. To Almire, LLC doing business at Austin Town Beverage Center, first floor only, 4903 Mahoning Avenue, Austin Town Township, Austin Town, Ohio, 44515. Permit number 0144903. Permit classes D5 and D6. Mr. Gavalier. No objection. <laughs> so moved. Time back in. Second. <laughs> Mrs. Devers? Yes. Mr. Santa? Yes. One more. <laughs> Whether to request a hearing to notice to legislate authority to approve the transfer from SP Drive Through LLC doing business at Emanuel's Drive Through, 1255 South Raccoon Road, Austin Township, Austin Town, Ohio, 44515, permanent, permit number 8429654, permanent. Permit classes C1 and C2 to Emanuel's Drive Through Inc. Doing business as Emanuel's Drive Through. 1255 South Raccoon Road, Austin Town Township, Austin Town, Ohio. 44515. Permit number 2506735. Permit classes C1 and C2. So moved. I'm sorry. Mr. I don't mean Cavalier. a lot. Yeah. Okay. I don't mean a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> With my accent, I could not say that. <laughs> so moved. And second. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Deavers? Yes. Before um, I say anything, did you have anything for us, Mr. Gavilar? You joined us a little few minutes late. Yeah, I just <clears throat> want to thank you for letting me attend the Mahoney County Mental Health and Recovery Board meeting tonight. <clears throat> uh, also, I just to update on the thefts from the township park with three cars. Uh, we were able to uh, file charges on two of the suspects there. We're still looking for three more. And again, as I was sending you the emails, there it's a group that's out of Florida that comes up to the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana. There's one more I can't think. But four months out of the year, they come up to the northern states here and do these crack, crash and grabs in the vehicles last year they targeted all the fitness centers uh, it's the purple planet planet, planet fitnesses they hit all those last year in the area in other states now this year they're uh, targeting township parks or parks city parks and that is what they're targeting uh, we we're glad that uh, 
cannot think that the police department in Pennsylvania was able to uh, stop the vehicle. Five of them uh, jumped out. They were able to catch two of them. And uh, two, we have on video at the Walmart here, so we were able to file charges. Still looking for another three. But again, stress, you know, if you're going to lock your valuables, you know, lock them in the trunk or take them with you so they're not in your car. That's it. Appreciate that. Appreciate all the hard work. But there's still somebody out there we're looking for in a car yeah, and everything there's else. Actually, about eight more of them out there. Uh, last. Uh, Thing we uh, picture we sent you up in the Cleveland area now, they're up in the Cleveland area. Well, it's kind of nice they're out of here, but it's not <laughs> Cleveland. Um, before I make a public response, I want to remind everybody that this, this meeting is for Austin business, anything with Austin Township, and any way that any of us sitting up here can help in any way. I just want you guys to realize it is just a reminder that it's Austin Town, Austin business only, okay? Um, so for public response, anybody on camera that would like to come up and speak to us are more than welcome to do that at this time. On camera. On or off, Troy Rhodes from Ohio Edison. Hi, Troy. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. A um, few things I want to bring to the trustees' attention. Um, you may be aware in the news over the last couple of weeks that NOPEC has uh, relinquished, I'm not quite sure what the right word is, for any electric customers that they have. Last uh, Thursday, or last Wednesday, the PUCO approved NOPEC to allow those, I shouldn't say allow, to um, those current electric customers to revert back to their primary utility service provider, which is Ohio Edison and our service territory, roughly around 50,000. Uh, customers are coming back that were under the NOPEC electric rate. Um, just wanted to bring that to your attention. We're not sure when that will go into effect, but those NOPEC customers, it'll take one to two billing cycles before those re those customers revert back to Ohio Edison as their primary uh, power provider. Um, just as a reference point, that does not mean that they those customers cannot go back out and shop for a new supplier, just to let you know that initially they will go back from no back to Ohio as just to bring that to your attention if you weren't aware of that. If uh, people receive, I would imagine over the summer those that have been with no pack sauce, huge spike in their charges from probably May, June, July time frame that that occurred, just bring that to your attention. The other thing is, is uh, Austin Town Township should have received a letter from Ohio Edison First Energy regarding their electric uh, street light ESIP rate that they are now able to shop that portion of the rate which is good from a savings additional savings for the uh, township that they can look into as far as bundling that with if you are utilizing any other energy provider to do that just a point in place you got you have over 1600 street lights and that is a base rate which is for those people out there um, from a broker selling power, that is phenomenal. So you may be able, Mike, to uh, be a little more competitive and looking for a bid for that. I contacted our broker and he said he was going to contact our uh, supplier, Energy Harbor, to see if the lights could join our aggregation. Yeah, and I would imagine, I'm not quite sure how many other facilities Austin Town has um, on there. That base rate, obviously, it's such a small kilowatt usage. You're not going to see a huge savings on that portion of the bill. But by bundling it in with the rest of, you may see in some of your high energy uses, it might assist in getting a better price. So your broker would be very savvy on that. So just to bring that to your attention. I also, I, I brought some brochures. And what this is about, if you may, I'm going to pass these out. This is a brochure that basically talks about easement rights that First Energy has with municipalities, residents, everybody that's out there. You want to see that? And I'll give you the last one so you're not left alone. Okay, so what this is, is basically it talks about the fact that First Energy has over 300,000 miles of easement rights and encroachment. So what we're challenged with right now is a lot of encroachment issues, whether it's on our transmission lines, 
or our distribution lines. I just saw a agreement this morning that we have down in Salem that was signed in 1937 for easement rates. So that just gives you an idea how far back our records go as far as the rights that we have. Salem is the, the signer of that. They've been the sole owner of that property since then. But imagine 1937 at a, a house where somebody signs that, the likelihood that the same owners are there to when that easement was originally signed. When those houses are sold or those properties are sold, those real estate um, in that sale, it should be documented that there is an easement provision in there. Some people don't ask for that. Some people gloss over that. So when they move into that residence or wherever that might be, and they decide to put up a barn, a fixed structure, a swimming pool underneath our power lines, that tends to be an issue for our side of the house. I'm bringing it to your attention that we are taking a more serious look at that in the future so that if any of your residents come to you and question that, the rights of that, it's up to the township obviously how you want to deal with that, but that brochures provides a number, provides an email of how they can contact and work that out. I bring it to the zoning department's attention also when they see people that are coming in requesting easement right, or zone buildings, whatever, that you keep that in mind knowing where those structures. Typically, you know, it's your distribution, it's just your uh, property, um, it's your power lines in the front. Where you see more of it is in some of these rural um, uh, developments over through like uh, uh, over towards Kirk Road and that area where you see our high line transmission lines where in the backyard people have taken into account that's a perfect place for that garage and that swimming pool it's in that right way. Just bring it to your attention to be aware and mindful. Any questions that you have you can always come to me and I'll route either the question or the individual with the right department within our company. Yes sir. Okay. Um, over the Greenbrier the utilities are in the backyard and on the sand and on the GIS the sanitary lines are showing and mm -hmm. that's how I know and I also know that the, you, the power lines are in the same easement right but in a lot of areas of the town especially the older areas it's once again with the, uh, the sanitary lines are in the backyard okay I don't always have access to where the power lines are in a lot of neighborhoods I just know from mm -hmm. experience um, would you be the contact person? Yeah, you can call me. I'm going to defer you to our real estate group, and okay. they'll be able to find The reason it. I'm asking yes, sir. is what I do with the sanitary engineer, they'll allow a fence on their easement. However, I put a caveat on the permit that if that easement has to be dug up to work on the sanitary line, the fence is going. They won't allow structures, yeah. but they will allow that, but it's instantaneous. When I email them, usually within a couple hours, I have a response back, and I attach that response to the zoning permit. And like I said, in Greenbrier, I live over there. I know where the mm -hmm. power lines are, so I do the best I can to keep people off of them. Now, in years past, before GIS, you really didn't know. No. And I don't have any records in my office, especially with the older subdivisions, for power lines. Um, is it possible for you guys to get that onto the GIS so I can just go in there and look myself? Because I don't think it's on right now. Yeah. If I'm you guys have a map, and you probably do have maps, like I know where most of the underground gas lines are, right. the sanitary lines are mapped, but it's, I struggle with the power lines. Yeah. Um, so, to, so let's, I'm going to give you my card. Give me a call, and I'll get you in contact with somebody out of our real estate department yeah. to provide you some Zoning answers. Will keep the, the structures off the easements if we right. know where, but I've got to give a resident an answer within like 24, 48 hours. I don't like to, I don't like to hand them up, especially if it's a 10 by 12 chat or something. Right. I can guarantee you, I will give you a call back in in a day. Okay. I can't guarantee you that our real estate will give me a call back in a day. Right. So what I can do is I can at least look up in GIS myself locally for that address. I should be able to give you some kind of guidance on that. I will tell you that, and in, in that brochure, there, it's provided any kind of a waiver. So like a fence, something that's um, easily removed, I would think that you would find 
some leniency in that situation. Driveways, you know, gravel roads. To your point, in those certain situations, and you'll see it in, uh, when First Energy or Ohio Edison provides access to for bike paths and things like that. We'll do those types of agreements, but with the caveat that we're gonna, if we have to go on there and there's any damage done to that, it's at the property owner's cost and expense. So those types of things you'll see. Backlot is, those are tough, very tough, especially on the distribution side, it is. But we'll work with you, so okay. anything that you can. Yeah, and like I said, I'm pretty sure, I, I've never found it on the GIS, and that would mm -hmm. be a great place to have it. Because yeah. I can go in there and find the stormwater lines, the, the, the fire hydrants, and the sanitary. Yeah. Our, our problem, as you see, our GIS is plus or minus whatever that might be. Where that street pole, where that light pole may be, because of the good data in, good data out kind of thing. Right? So we run into that kind of challenge. What I can do is you send me it. I'll run it through our local uh, engineering department, and if there's any question, we'll send somebody out there to take a look at it. And I would say most of the power lines in Austin are out in the public right. Of Correct. The traditional. Yeah, system. absolutely. Like I said, in Greenbrier, they're not. They're in the back. Absolutely. 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 Right. absolutely. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I also wanted to bring your attention on November 14th. I've worked with Austin Town Fire Department. We're going to be doing a live wire demonstration where we're bringing in our safety trailer um, working with uh, Captain is it O'Hare I saying it right mm -hmm. yeah. um, working with him to coordinate to set that up for the 14th it'll be in the evening it'll be a great opportunity to come out um, what we're uh, opening well it's truly up to Austin Town Fire who we'd love to see there is obviously fire police and also any of your public works people that can be there because those are sort of the first responders downlines, zoning to be there, because we also, we, not only are we demonstrating the risks of overhead, but underground too. And there's a lot of underground in Austin Town too that people need to be mindful of. As you mentioned, you know, the underground, and then somebody wants to put plant flowers around our transformer pad. Depending on how deep you're digging, you got a risk there, right? Putting in a picket fence out in the front yard. People do not think about that and how quick that could energize. So to bring that to your attention. And then just something that was stated earlier as far as, um, so Board of Elections. So one of the things that my role is is to work with the County Board of Elections to find out and identify each voting location for that day to ensure that that address is in our system. And on that day, that address, the Senior Center, a place like that is put as a critical A asset. So God forbid if there's a storm that day, that's at the top priority to get out there and get that off. Uh, back energized and up and running. Appreciate that. And then the next day it's not a priority to get there. So but anyway, any questions for me? Yes. This um one. any since we had a problem in the winter time with the electric, I wanted to know how the update on the power grid is going in Austin Town. So so what I'm winter's coming. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So so yes we had serious challenges from roughly end of November all the way through February, early March. Wickless Sub was our issue there. We've got that resolved. If you've noticed um, the wind and outage off of that Wickless Sub, we're not seeing 2,000 people, 1,900 people out. That's operationally concerned. We always have those pesky squirrels, raccoons, car accidents, trees falling that are causing them. I can send you a report. I'll send it to both of you that just shows what the outages were at a Wickliffe sub from last November to where they've been today. And it's drastically reduced. We can't, Mother Nature's, we're all prone to that. But as far as from an operational standpoint, yes. we feel confident that the repairs that we've made out there at Wickliffe sub and some of the other modernizations that we've done off of Raccoon Road mm -hmm. will help eliminate and reduce those outage times that are going on. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much. We put in a trust. So does our resident. You got to stop. Yeah. All I know is one time where a truck hit one of the uh, power poles, and Ohio Edison was on the pole, and that car was still like literally attached to that pole. Yeah, you guys are quick yeah. to respond. Yeah, and and I have to give credit to our North Jackson line shop. 
Um, they're, they're the ones that respond to all those outages. And unfortunately, what was going on at one time is because of where the type of outages that were occurring, it was faults on the wires. We couldn't identify where on the wire the fault was. And what we finally realized what was happening was it was at the underpass or the well the overpass of the construction site off of Kirk Road, Kirk Road mm -hmm. and I Turner. Kirk. We were out there on a repair when all of a sudden the wind blew and saw the contact at that time and that helped because we had sensors throughout our lines to try to determine where that fault was at and we couldn't we couldn't narrow it down and it just so happened every once in a while Murphy's Law helps us on that situation that they observed it occurring and what was happening was it's a sag coming across because we had to temporarily run wires across there and those wires were crossing paths through the wind so we saw that issue but that was one of them um, but I appreciate the patience of the community that they had to go through and the unfortunate games and stuff that they missed through that opportunity but we're getting the result that's so, thank you. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Does anybody out here have a question for Mr. Troy? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anybody else on camera that would like to come up and speak tonight? Okay, how about off camera? Remarks from the board, and that would be Mr. Robert Santos. All right, I get to go first. I'm not sure you're wrong here, so <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really not much. I'm already see as a reminder. We have our trunk retreat. It's going to be October 29th at the Township Park. It's going to start at 3:30. Um, their trunk retreat will go to about 5:30, at which time, if weather permitting, we'll have a movie as well. It starts at six. We'll have Hocus Pocus. Um, definitely a good. <coughs> it's good we have a community mm -hmm. event. We'd um, like some more trunks. Yeah. So you guys, more hey, more than merrier. I mean, I, I Anybody want that you know, more so, participants for these children in Austin Town. Everybody wants the children to have something to do. We need some trunks. Candy. Go buy some candy. Mm -hmm. candy and throw it in your trunk and pass it's, it's out a, to the it's kids. It's a safer way. <laughs> I'm a good, we all know, I mean, it's hard to tell which houses are offering candy. I think Chuck or Treats are definitely uh, beneficial because they're all right there. Saturday the 29th. It's a nice, safe environment. Yep. And I we know. need your trunks. Uh, we can. <laughs> I have some uh, forms for you if you guys want some to sign up. Uh, other than that, um, I haven't mentioned it, but might as well uh, reiterate it. With the curbside uh, recycling, I keep saying voting, but it's going to be recycling. I don't know why I keep saying curbside voting. Um, I spoke to it about a while ago that it was going away. I guess it got, and this is a state project, so this has nothing to do with the trustees or anyone was all funded by the state. The prosecutors looked at it and they actually have to give us a year's notice. So we're good for another year. So we don't have to think of a alternative route to where if it does go, we'll have a year to figure something out so we can still recycle because obviously if the curbside recycling goes away, we all see the recycling over at the Township Park and over at the Nile Memorial. It's already overflowing pretty much every day. You know it's gonna be ten times more once that goes away. So that's awesome. The new manager has got to wait a year. So if he says today, he gets to get something out. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I just want to um, make a note about Starbucks opening up on the Hunting Avenue. And we don't seem to be having any problems with traffic, have we, Mr. Gavalier? I, I get a little upset when I'm on social media and how everybody downsizes, like makes the um, restaurants or coffee shops or whatever and say, oh, we don't need that or oh, I don't like that. Or, we need to thank these businesses to come into our town. We need to let them know that we appreciate them. They opened up and that's their second store in Austin Town and that's great for us. And I just get a little disappointed every time I get on any of them. Websites, I can't even look at them because all they are is want to show us negativity and we need to be positive and thank God that we have another business in Austin Town. I know, I know people don't think, oh, that was a good idea, but we can't tell what businesses to come here. Let's appreciate the ones that we got. As being a business owner, I thank them for coming to Austin Town. And that's all I have to say. Awesome.
Motion to get my paper. <laughs> Motion to recess to executive session for the following. To consider the appointment, employment, and discipline and compensation of public employees. <coughs> Mr. Stanford? Yes. Mr. Stanford? Yes. In association with Austin Town Local Schools, and Austin Town Township.